You're watching Sky News at 10 and it's time for our press preview. First look at what's making the front pages as they arrive. And joining us for tonight's uh, headlines, broadcaster and consumer journalist Alice Beer and Nigel Nelson, political editor at The People. Welcome once more and we are still saying Merry Christmas, aren't we? Oh, I We're think still keeping so. it going. Yeah. Yeah. That's not in your selection, I see here, Nigel. Amazing. It was in mine. And he, he had a very nice up. hat as well. He dressed up for the occasion, clearly, but however. Um, but we are going to fall over the fiscal cliff, are we? I thought oh. so. OK. Financial Times, with a very serious-looking president there, striding off Marine One, the helicopter, back to the White well, House. he's had to put down his uh, Hawaiian cocktail and come back to... Uh... Washington, I yeah, think I mean, he is, is he miserable. calling the, the bluff of the Republicans on a Capitol? Bit. I mean, actually, he's right to look serious, too. Mm. Um, and what the FT says is that any hopes of a deal are fading anyway. Um, and the paper, the paper is saying that Democrats and Republicans are just too far apart now to be able to agree anything in, in, in time for the deadline. So are we going to get the blame game now? So, so we're, I think it's started we're, already. It is starting already, and, yep, and we are getting the blame game. So, I mean, broadly what is going to happen is on Monday, America runs out of money. Um, they can't borrow any more because they've reached their limit, which is actually set by statute. Mm -hmm. So a lot of emergency tax rises and public spending cuts will start coming in. Well, that, that, yeah. To and the tune of £650 billion. Pounds. I mean, it, of course it's serious, but I think it's a very unhelpful metaphor you know, the fiscal cliff, which is, is just a, a metaphor that's been bandied around. It, it, we've been walking towards, they've been walking towards it for some time. And, yeah, but we, we might actually see, you know, markets worldwide on Monday actually dive off. We might fall off. I mean, on, on Monday you start to fall yeah. off. Yeah. But it's extraordinary. I mean, the House of Representatives saying they'll, they'll hold a work session on Sunday beginning at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. A matter of hours before this all happens on the Monday. They it should have had this sorted out before Christmas, yeah. um, but they didn't. That certainly the House of Representatives couldn't, and, the, and they've disappeared now for their Christmas holidays. Well, I think we still we still got uh, proceedings underway in the Senate. Let's just uh, take a look and a listen to what's happening there. Well, it's not exactly full of urgency, yeah. is it? Isn't what it has no, to say. Isn't that strange? Why suddenly the panic and the last Mr. hours Cardin. when this deadline has been established for? Well, is Come it on. because they've seen Mr. those Carver. pictures of the president striding purposefully across the, the White House lawn from Mr. the helicopter? Well, they should know that got, they, they have got this deadline till Monday, and if they don't get Mr. it sorted Chandler. out, they're in real trouble. And not, not just America in real trouble, the rest of us are too. Oh America is the world's biggest economy. If they go back into recession and these emergency measures would take out something like yeah. $500 billion from the American economy, if they go into recession, then the world goes with them. And this yeah. is why it's, it's featuring so large on the front of the FT, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And, and as you say, the, the most significant thing is what Wall Street perceives to be happening. And on Monday, of course, they will perceive that this is, this is it. There is no going back. And then there London, is no deal. Zurich, Frankfurt and the dominoes continue, yeah. OK, well, let's look at The Telegraph with this uh, story about uh, becoming a lawyer with uh, an apprenticeship, which is an interesting yep. sort of way to I was progress. A bit, when we first saw, the, saw this first time, I was a bit sceptical about this, mm -hmm. but having looked a bit more closely, I can see many of the benefits there. I mean, what the um, skills minister, Matthew Hancock, is arguing is that if you, you raise standards of apprenticeships, there's no reason why for people who decide they don't want to go to university, they don't want to get lumber with £60,000 worth of debt at the end of it, go into an apprenticeship. And if you, get, if you get the apprenticeships right, then there's no reason why they can't lead you on the job to the and, profession. And of those 57,000 people who didn't go to university this year, who were predicted to go, there were probably some great potential lawyers and, and exactly. good professionals in there. But what, what about this? I mean, the, the firms will have to pay for these apprenticeships. It will cost them. Yes. Why don't they also perhaps sponsor someone who wants to be a lawyer or an accountant through university in the same way, i.e. you serve your apprenticeship while you're at university and learning would the, the they profession. when they can have somebody doing the groundwork? I mean, you look at lawyers who are sitting on, on their backsides charging by the hour, billing by the hour by the hour because they know they can. They could have people doing the groundwork. Perhaps it could reduce some bills. Yeah, but how, how much are they going to learn as they would do oh, at law school or university? Where did you learn most? On the job. <sighs> As they Pardon? say. Right, yeah. uh, right <laughs> OK. But, however, as you say, Nigel, the government's taking it seriously. And we've mm. got Matthew Hancock, the skills minister, pointing out, for instance, Price Waterhouse Coopers, one of the big four uh, accountancy firms, is developing a master's level Indeed. apprenticeship. I mean, I mean, I mean something like, uh, someone like Price Waterhouse already do a form of apprenticeship. And if you want to be an accountant there, 
you actually take your, you, you work for, for the firm, take your exams as you're going along mm. and become qualified at the end of it. Mm. This is more or less the same kind of system. Would, so, it, would it work with journalism? I don't. Well, in fact, it, it does work with, with, it with does work with journalism. Because yeah, yeah, it's think, always been argued it's a trade rather than a profession. I don't it, think really? it, it is Did a you trade. not start on local papers? That's oh, where yes. I started. Yeah, I mean, not many of them left now. That's a great oh, shame. Yeah. We could it? sit yeah. and moan about that for a long time. The but Surrey yes. Daily Advertiser, as it was then, a daily paper. So I think I read than... the stars for one local paper, but uh, I won't, <laughs> I won't go into that. <laughs> Let's take a look at the bottom of the Express, it says here, um, which is oh, going yes. to be the EU, I suspect. Is that right? And Herman Van Rumpy, who has claimed that British attempts to loosen ties with Brussels... Oh, it's, oh, it's on, page two. Oh, I do beg its pardon. Yes, oh, I'm on page two. I've, I've gone to the... You've gone to Kate and Ned. I've gone to the yeah, here we are. Inside page, there it is. Eurocrats in a panic over Britain's exit. And he does look a bit panicked there, doesn't he? He does look yeah. like he's just been plugged <laughs> in, rather, doesn't he? Is startled? Let's just reflect on what European panic looks like. I, there we are. I think I've just watched a film with him in it with the kids. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it was not, an elf. Not a Christmas. Oh, it was elf, right, OK. <laughs> One of Santa's helpers. Yeah. Well, apparently, if we loosen our ties with Brussels, it's all going to unravel like the proverbial Christmas sweater. Um, and it, it'll be an absolute disaster. Which would be music to the ears of some Tory backbenchers, of course. Well, Paul Cameron, he's got it in one ear from Clegg, saying, stand up and be counted like Thatcher before yeah. you um, in the EU. And he's got it in the other ear from Herman, saying, don't go, don't go. So, But uh, this is the EU Council president. He mm -hmm. has yep. some weight, some influence. Yes. Does this reflect a bit of a sort of growing frustration, anger, getting, I mean, desperation? Europe is getting Can irritated with us. They don't want us to walk away. But um, if we, we strike too hard a deal, then th they will let us walk away. I think the point that um, Van Rumpy makes, which is really important here, is that if all 27 member states sat back and said, hey, guys, we want to renegotiate, we want to cherry-pick the various bits of the European Union which suit us, mm. then the whole thing can't work. I mean, it, it is a common market. That's how it started. Yeah. Um, and, and in that come the common policies. So... If Britain starts saying, right, we don't like the working time directive, for instance, which would be one area we would think about moving away from, that will start to make the EU unravel. Um, so he has a very good point. The whole, it, it is a union. We want to try and keep the union together, and we're not helping. But oh. here, here's, here's another thought, that perhaps it's that the power doesn't actually lie with Brussels any longer, or, or even Paris. It is now with Berlin and increasingly Warsaw and Budapest and so on. It's, it, you know sphere of influence, if you like, is growing further to the east. So is that adding to their sense of, of foreboding that this is starting to fracture now? Well, the problem is you, that the more member states you have, the more that, that, that power is going to be di uh, is yeah, going to diverse. And the more right, splits right and strains yeah, develop. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there are 27 member states, so it's an awful lot. Um, different cultures. They're it, very difficult to keep, to keep that lot yeah. together. But Britain... Britain constantly saying, right, we won't, we won't stay in unless we renegoti renegotiate right. is a real problem. Alice, I'm going to give but you a referendum. I'm going to give you a chance to vote now. And it's yes or no, in or out. I, I think we've got to be in. You do? I'm sorry, but we have to. We, but we can cherry-pick. I do believe ah. that if we have such power, then we should renegotiate. So it's in, sort of. In, no, I'm in, but I want to be a nimby about this and I want to pick bits that I... Yes. I suspect that's probably what most, most people would, you know, if there is a box in, but, you know, with extra bits added. Oh, you've but got me down as most people Ultimately, now. Ultimately, the referendum question is going to be in or out. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. what, that's yeah. the, the direction we're going in at the moment. Right. OK. Well, let's reflect on Action Man Cameron. Oh, I love it. Uh, all I the gear gonna... and no idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> times, first of all, uh, where he is striding manfully, or is he gasping for breath? I don't know. Uh, he is in the Chadley. Great Brook Run. But look at the headline possible. next to it. The nation drowns in the wettest year. <laughs> what is yeah. unfortunate positioning, isn't it? Well, that's it? what the papers have chosen. <laughs> However, we can exclusively reveal what the Prime Minister himself has chosen. This is what he's tweeted. I don't think that's quite as, as dramatic, actually. No, I'd have pinched um, one of the other that's, pictures. That's on his tweet, uh, showing his bare knees. Um, but I oh, think the best one, actually... That is the is, Spin Doctor's version. That's the Spin tweet. Doctor's yes. version. <laughs> but the, I think the best one is in the eye. Where he's actually, Coming under the, yeah, yeah, the bridge. Which is very sort of special force. No, it's the hospital it, doctor's version. <laughs> there, we, there we have him crawling under the bridge. Um, <gasps> and coming to... out the other side, yes. the spin doctor, as you say. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I... he's not a Tory wet, is he? Um, no, he, I don't know, he it, is. 
does this do a prime minister any good or well i thought it did quite but it, it made him look slightly middle-aged and portly i'm afraid and i thought sam <laughs> and dave were very um fit and off with their personal trainer every morning going for a quick jog and and i think he's been at the turkey i'm afraid and the christmas pud when you compare him to i don't know if you've got the, the pictures of putin having taking a dip in in southern siberian sea with his all muscles <laughs> yeah but he's um, got a bad back at the moment isn't he when he, he did that sort of uh, flight with that um hang glider he, he did his back yes. in so oh um, look he was out exercising and i was stuffing trained. my I mean, face yeah. like, someone like yeah. Peter, he really is quite a muscly <laughs> he did guy. look good though he did look very good yeah but, but one one wonders that you know if, if it hadn't gone quite so well and, and prime minister falls flat in his face in the river it was a risk uh, Not great. Yeah, it's, it's the neil kinnock falling into the sea at brighton but what, what, but what is it? also illustrating is a weather story I mean, yeah. the whole thing yes. is that, that um, uh, the, the water here has risen in a way it's not done before. So mm. we wouldn't be seeing images like this yeah. if we hadn't had the wettest, whatever it is, well, the wettest, it's the wettest year. year in England Since on record, yeah. declared yeah. by the Met began Office. began in 1910, apparently. Yeah, and they're now saying if it continues, it could be the wettest for the UK on record, for the, yes. the, the whole of the nation. Um, but they're looking at, uh, I think, the Thames Barrier going up again tonight. Uh, with the storm surge as well. Uh, but the average rainfall, here we are, uh, total average across England for this year, this is rainfall, mm. uh, 1,095.8 millimetres, which actually sounds a lot more than 43.1 inches, doesn't it? It but does. Is, is that Thames <laughs> Barrier actually doing anything? Does it just go up and down because we paid a lot of money for it? No, I think it actually it avoids actually... our sofa here floating away. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still here. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it is actually, has it been proven to be to be working? I mean, yes, we are here. We're well, not floating. I think, but... I think they're basically saying there are parts of London that would be underwater without it. Yeah. So that's how serious well, Having it been under a foot of water in my house um, in 19... Uh, when was it? 2007. Yeah. Um, I no know joke. it takes a year and a half to get over it. Yeah. It, it's. It, even, I mean, yeah, so it's, it's, some saying it, to get the insurance to pay up and so It's on. a the boring other. headline. It's very grim. The you know the wettest year on record. But for most people, you know, who have been flooded, that is devastating. And they won't have been insured if they live in a flood area. So yeah. it really or, or is quite horrible. Or if they've had a, a, a two claims within two years, or whatever. Yeah, they'll, absolutely. They'll there on, are so. many people who. Yeah. Are we'll keep an eye on the weather forecast. We'll update that for you a little later. Also to come. Uh, Mrs. Winslet, who is now Mrs. Rock and Roll.